Matt, when you get a moment, if you could bring up that painting. Let's bow our heads and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, not one of us here this morning is deserving of your grace, and yet you shower it down upon us. You have rescued us through the waters of holy baptism, called us into your presence, lift us up through your life-giving word, and send us back out. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds that we may discern your will together this morning, that we may be fed and nourished to do just that. In Jesus' name, amen. This painting, uh, it will help us a little bit this morning in our time in the Word. If you can't see the fine detail, don't worry about it. Uh, the, the painting as a whole is enough. It was done in the 1500s by Simon de Mile. It's Noah's Ark on top of Mount Ararat. The actual painting is about six feet wide and four feet high, <clears throat> so very impressive. It's in a private collection now. I first saw this painting when I was in a doctor's waiting room for my oldest daughter. Uh, they had it on the wall, and I kind of just kept looking at it in different ways. And uh, as you see a painting, either this one or like this, what thoughts pop into your head or what comes to mind? Perhaps it's, uh, oh, Noah's Ark. That's like my favorite Sunday school story of all time. Uh, probably one of the most popular, or in the top ten at least, for many people. Maybe a quick glance at something like this takes you back to uh, the Ark at Kennywood. Maybe. Uh, or if you've been there, or if you've been fortunate, maybe it's that ginormous Ark in Kentucky uh, that you can actually walk through and take it all in and the grandeur and the scale of it. Maybe for you, uh, for me, we had, for two of our three children, our nursery was Noah Ark themed. We started with a simple lamp that somebody got us uh, and then had to match everything else to it. Uh, it had this gravitational pull effect. I don't know how it happened, but we, then we had a mobile with little cute animals and then we had wall stickers on the wall and then throw blankets and... Uh, before you knew it, you were in Noah's Ark land uh, in this room in our house. And then, unrelated, uh, we went from our first child, Desiree, to our second child, Noah. Uh, uninfluenced by the nursery. Chose the name independently, but it worked out very well. Worked out very well. And then, JP, you had a different theme altogether. So, you can think of many different things uh, when you see Noah's Ark but it probably depends on who you ask and when. <clears throat> if you don't concentrate just on the animals, maybe you see the water all around. That's just the tip of this mountain is poking up. And so even for us here, just a few weeks ago, uh, one of those summer storms came through. Uh, and just dumped in waves and sheets, and the trees are whipping back and forth. Uh, the amount of water that just let loose in 20 minutes, uh, as the power flickered on and off, and it, not even so much the storm itself, but after the storm had come quickly through, the water still just seemed to keep coming. Uh, and so along the sides of the road, normally where it's just the shoulder, you see water channeling and starting to fill into the sewers. And then parking lots becoming small ponds uh, and inches of water everywhere where it shouldn't be. And so that imagery of water can be fresh but take on a different meaning for us then. I think it's only just in the last week that Pete finished cutting up the trees uh, that were in the corner of the parking lot and getting that cleared out away in the debris uh, and so many people without power. If we would ask somebody from New Orleans 
uh, what they thought when they saw a painting where only the tip of a mountain was exposed and the rest is covered in water. They might remember sitting on a rooftop or waiting for a boat to come by and, and help them with the flooding that they've experienced. Water can remind us very vividly of the destructive power of water. <clears throat> For Noah's family, if we would ask Noah, what do you think when you see this painting? I wonder where their minds would go. Of course, if, they're, if it's this exact moment where you're supposed to go out and replenish the earth, repopulate the earth, that it would be hope and joy and excitement. But surely there would have to be memories of when the rain began. If what we experienced here happened in just 20 minutes, imagine 40 days and 40 nights of rain, uh, of cries and terror outside of the ark, and the sounds of people and animals, and then at some point, even more terrifying, no sounds of people or animals anymore. And just the sound of the rain pounding on the sides and the roof of the ark. And so then when Noah's family is coming off, there's excitement, there's hope. But what the painting doesn't show us is probably the reality that they're coming down uh, onto dry ground again. But there's probably thousands of bodies and animal carcasses on the ground and floating in the water still that we don't like to paint or think about, but it's part of the reality. In this event, God saw the wickedness in the earth and said, I'm going to destroy all that I have made, save for this family and a few animals, and we'll start over, if you will. We'll repopulate the earth. Earth 2.0, the second try. And it's only moments into this where they're on top of dry ground when we hear of Noah building an altar and sacrificing to the Lord. And as this aroma of death of the sacrifices lifted up, we hear God say these words. Even though the inclination of their minds is evil from birth, all of mankind, I will never again destroy everything that lives as I have just done. Even though everything's been destroyed, everything in the earth is still fallen, is still corrupted by sin. And so there is no way to do a holy do-over through destruction, through a flood. It's not going to work. He could flood the earth three or four more times, and it's not going to have the effect of starting anew. And so God makes a promise. God makes a promise to Noah and his family, to the entire world, that he's going to make a covenant and say, I will never again destroy the world in this way. And it's at this exact moment that God changes the way that he will use water. He vows never again to use it for mass destruction. But we know now today that through Noah, his promise to Adam and Eve that we confessed earlier of a Savior will come to fruition. That you and I today can be called through the waters of holy baptism. Where there is destruction, but it's destruction of sin, of death and the devil. God promises and sets a bow in the clouds. The rainbow is not so much a promise for you and me, a reminder, but in our reading it said, God, it will remind him of his covenant that he made with all of creation to never again destroy the world in this way. And so God takes this water, 
water that was meant for great destruction, and he turns it into this powerful means of grace. This means of blessing. Blessing for all people once again. When you look at Noah's Ark, you may have in the past just said, oh, well, I know of Noah's Ark in that story, or I like rainbows in the sky when I see them, but it's not really my story. I don't have any personal connection to it. But you do. You do. Through the waters of holy baptism, your baptism, you are created new. And you too, then, like Noah, coming down that ramp, being sent out into a world that's still full of destruction, that's still full of death, but with a new purpose. A new purpose. And so too for you and me. Our old Adam, our old Eve, is daily drowned in our waters of baptism. And we're sent out when we get out of bed every morning, out into the world, coming down that ramp, into a world that's still full of destruction, still corrupted by sin, but we're created anew to share hope, to share joy, to have that promise, an eternal promise. And so it is fitting for us today to remember our baptism. I don't know what age you were baptized at, Uh, I was this big or so, uh, and don't remember the responses that were said on my behalf as God worked faith in me, all up to him. And so maybe for you too, you never got to answer for yourself. Uh, And so in our remembrance this morning, it's not a re-baptism, your baptism is still valid, but it's just a chance for us to profess our faith together and answer those same responses knowing that that promise God's promise for you that's not one of destruction it's one of hope it's one of new life it's true for you today and so I invite you now to stand with me if you're able and we'll go through that baptismal remembrance once more On this day, as we remember how the Lord delivered Noah and his family from the flood, let us also remember our deliverance in baptism from death to life. Let us pray that all believers would embrace that promise, would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I ask you this day, Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce the devil. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the hope of glory, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, has forgiven all your sins, strengthened you with his grace, to life everlasting. You may be seated. Whether it is here as you're in church and your eyes 
glance around before the service starts and you notice the baptismal font, uh, whether you're out and about down at the point in the Three Rivers, or if you're at Moraine State Park or up in Erie, or the ocean on a summer vacation, whenever you behold a great body of water, or even in those frequent summer storms that we experience, may you be reminded of your baptism too. That there is destructive powers, but that our God is greater, and his grace is greater.